Um, so uh, I'm very happy to uh, introduce Professor Shafran Diamond. Um, so he was a Berkeley guy, um, uh, going back to the, uh, received his PhD in 96, 86, right? PhD from Berkeley in 86, uh, stuck around for a little while as a researcher there, um, was uh, faculty at Cornell uh, for several years uh, before being, becoming faculty at uh, Tel Aviv University. Um, I could say while well, he was at Tel Aviv, he's essentially run everything that one can run in electrical engineering there. He's run his department, he's run the nano center there, and is currently running his sabbatical, which is probably the most enjoyable thing he's had to run yet. Um, so I think you're all going to enjoy his talk very much. Um, in talking to him, his research interests are unbelievably diverse, uh, which is great for this group. Everything from materials, fabrication, electrochemistry, biosensing, cells, it's all in there. So um, uh, I think it's going to be a great talk, and we're very thankful for your work. Thanks, Ian. Um, welcome. Thank you for coming to the talk. As you can see, I'm from the W University. I also affiliate with the Dynamo in Japan. Practically, last night I had like 180 slides, so we decided to cut down. <laughs> <laughs> so Hadar gave me a kind of uh, overview of who are the attendants, so reduced it to significant less number of slides. But still, it's I'm not going. To, I had an either option to pick one of the topic and to give you like all the way to the bottom, but I decided to give kind of bits and pieces of what we do, highlights, and also some recent results. And at the end of the talk, I have some problem with one of the experiments. I'm going to show you today, maybe somebody will come with a solution. <laughs> <laughs> to gain something from this visit. We have some device that are very weird. So just to tell you what we do, what we do, this is, my name is Yossi Schaffen Diamant. In Hebrew, you pronounce everything in the first syllable. Research, we work on polymeric microtechnology, MEMS, census actuators. At the strengths of our group is metallization. We started, I worked for almost 15 years on uh, metallization, electrolyte plating, electroplating for BLSI. And about 10 years ago, uh, how do you say, like, uh, uh, we had like, a, we dis I discovered the biochip field. Because somebody asked me to do some electrodes for him, and it worked fine, and another person from biotechnology asked me, and so on and so forth, and now I find myself running two labs, one BSI technology and one biochip technology. And the biochip technology is even much bigger. We work on also on electroactive polymers, conducting polymers, and uh, we started to work on nano imprinting. And uh, a lot of the work that we do is to we have a problem, not a problem, we have to work on surface functionalization. I'm going to tell you a little bit. This is some of the devices that we make. This is PDMS micro motors. And this is some flexible electrodes that I'm going to show. But when I finally decided what to talk about today, what to show you, and when the title, is, if you look at the title or you read the title, the right the title is Electrochemistry and Biology. This is kind of, it's not a, it's not a title for the talk, this is a title for an institute. Mm -hmm. And what I can say in an hour about what we do in this field, and especially when if you think about the name, electrochemistry and biochips have two meanings. I can talk about biosensing, by bio electrochemical sensing, molecular, cellular, and tissue. My group, we mostly focus on cellular and on tissue. We don't focus so much on molecular, also we do some work. But I can also talk about electro electrochemistry, how to make the chips. And this is how we started. We started by making the chips because the strength of my group was that we know and we understand micro microfabrication. I still consider myself, if people ask me what are you doing, I say I plumber. I build pipes, micro pipes, but pipes and electrons. Etching, analyzation, electro deposition. So I'm going to talk a little bit on both about biology process technology, biosensing, a little bit by integration. I'm not going to talk today, but this is something that we do a lot. It's, we are in the electrical engineering department. We have very good friends with the, the best signal processing people and VLSI designers. How do we integrate signal processing? How do we look at biochips and look at the signal and analyze the signal which is coming from biological matter? One of my students is now a postdoc in MIT. 
in his PhD, he looked at microbes which express some protein that will affect the electrochemical method. But then, this is a signal. For electrical engineer, this is a signal. The signal is a noise. How do you calculate the autocorrelation of the signal coming from the microbes? How do you calculate the optimal filter for a signal coming from the microbes, which is, it's not, it's not a linear device. It has its own ideas of how to behave. It's, uh, it's not, uh, it's, uh, it's not stable, and how do you analyze the system? How do you make the system to get the best signal-to-noise ratio? What is the meaning of signal-to-noise ratio when you deal with biochips, with the time-varying devices? Now, if you talk about biochips technology, uh, you can always, you know, the silicon, the material that is always there, because you can make metal cell electrodes and also semiconductor electrodes, which is nice. Uh, Semiconductor electrodes has a lot of advantages that we use. Mostly we use uh, what we call electroly elect electrolyte uh, uh, insulator semiconductor devices, either by capacitive modes or by misfit mode. Glass and polymers, we can do metal electrodes. We focus on polymeric substrate where we do gold, gold, silver, chloride, three electrodes, and also on functionalized silicon electrodes. But let's move on. Why do we worked a lot on silicon, but in the last few years we switched to polymers. And we recently switched also to printed devices. The reason is uh, plastic biochips are abundant of processes. You can, any process you can do it. Silicon you cannot mold. Silicon you cannot print. It's, you have a wafer, and this is the, what you have. Uh, polymers you can shape in three dimensional. You can do laser printing, you can do molding, you can do hot embossing, lamination, nano imprinting. We recently do nano, wire, uh, nano, uh, nano electrodes on chips by uh, nano imprinting. Very useful technique. It's a little bit problematic because you have to change your mind. Because we also use to make our masks and to do lithography. Nano imprinting is different. You are pushing material, but how to push it in the right way, how to hit it, how to get exactly what you want. But it's a, I have to tell you, we, we, have, we got a new machine a year ago, and my students are in love with it. Because it delivers. It makes nice chips, nice, nice biochips. Surface modification, bio Many of the polymers are biocompatible, but not all of them. Some of them are really dangerous. But the most important, I think, is if you look at the application. You can make it low cost in high volumes. Think about the device, it's the reel-to-reel -reel device. You take a, like a sheet of plastic, you move it through your processing device, print, deposit, you get devices on the other way which you can print. Now why low cost is important, I don't have to tell you. Low cost is because we pay for it. Our insurance pay for it. We want it to cost also disposable, sorry for the typo, and flexible devices. This is extremely important for implanted devices because when you implant, a device in the body. For example, we used to implant silicon electrodes in brain of rats. When the rat is moving, the silicon acts like a knife. Basically, after a few weeks, unfortunately, we lose the signal. When we switch to flexible devices, it can last forever, and we can choose polymers, for example, with the same young modulus as the durometer. <coughs> so the electrode and the surrounding of the electrode are the same strength. So there's no interaction between of them, no mechanical interactions. Uh, key issues in catalyzation. If, if you notice, since I'm coming from the area of catalyzation, one of the biggest problems for biochips is how to do the catalyzation. And the reason is, if you walk in the lab, it's very simple. You say, I take the polymer, put it in the evaporator, and you get very nice coating. But if you look at your biochips, and you try to produce a lot of them on polymers, you find out you have delamination, you have bubbles, you have defects. It's very, if you want to, if you want to move it to manufacturing, to high volume manufacturing, it's very difficult. You always say for graduating for a PhD, you need a one working device. But we are engineering department. We need to think beyond the beauty. So why? High young modulus. The coefficient of thermal expansion is 2, 5 to 20 ppm per degree Celsius. Do not bind to carbon at low temperatures, very difficult. Uh, patterning requires aggressive chemistry of plasma. 
on the other, but they have high strengths. Polymers, on the other hand, they have low Young modulus. They have coefficient of thermal expansion typically above 100. There are some polymers which are 50 or 60, but very few of them are 5 to 20. So when you hit them, they expand. When you, when you cool them down, they shrink. And but they have different Young modulus. You have a very strong shear force between them, and this is then you have the lamination, especially when you want to have reliability of this device for a long time. In high surface energy, you have a problem of D-weight. So, and the low shear stress, and they're very easy. When you scissors, you can cut them. So, you see the completely different concept. So, one of the problems is biochip metallization, is there are two ways to store for this problem. First, you want to improve the metallization scheme. Uh, for example, avoid metallization. You know, one of the ways to solve the problem is to avoid it. Use conducting polymers. Now, conducting polymers are great, and we use polypyrrole a lot. The problem is the conductivity is not good enough. So what we found out, and this is something we, are, we, are, so we presented last, uh, last month, and we are writing a paper. You do electro, you do polypyrrole. I hope, if you're not familiar with this, I'm going to show a slide later. Then we electroplate this thin layer of gold polypyrrole, gold, make a multi-layer structure. Then you have a composite material, which is has a very high conductivity and very flexible. So you have to be creative, find some, some invent a new material. Or uh, alter alternatively is uh, use some electrochemistry, some surface modification. For example, use electrolytic deposition or electrophoretic deposition. You have to show some new method, and today I learned uh, some other possibilities. Uh, the visit today but it was fantastic. I learned a lot of things. This is good. So, electroless plating. If you're not familiar with electroless plating, it's a method which people use it a lot. It's one of the very common methods to make cheap jewelry and PC boards. In electronics, it's not so common, but you can do a lot of things. It's a low temperature, it's a highly selective, you can do a variety of materials, it's simple, and the problem is the bust of heat is it's difficult to make the bust. You need some experience, the aqua solution effects, and some of, some of the bust, the pH is too high for the polymers. Solution is to redesign bath uh, with a pH between 5 to 9, which is pretty benign to most of the, the polymers, deposit it below 70 degrees, or using a ionic liquid solution, which are basically non aqueous solutions then you don't have to worry about water going into your system. So electrolyte deposition of polymer, but still, how to bring the metal on the polymer? So you can, is, is, one way is to uh, sputter or deposit a very thin layer of C layer or using self-assembled modulator activation, which I'm going to show. Uh, by the way, you can deposit gold, silver, nickel, copper, platinum, platinum, copper, iron, also, the co-alloys, co a combination of this material, or alloys with phosphorus, boron, tungsten, rhenium. And each one of them has a very, you can suppose, magnetic material. Uh, there's a, a, a lot of possibilities in electrolytic state. Um, this is, for example, a electrolyst, an array of electrodes inside PDMS. And this is a damascene process for the IBM guys here. Basically, you take the PDMS, dig some trenches, electroplate inside, and then do some polishing, and you can have beautiful embedded material metal inside, inside the polymer. The advantage of having embedded metal inside the polymer, so now the metal has three walls, not only one on the bottom. So we found out that this structure, and we put a little bit of passivation on the top, even when we bend it, the metal, in the, we got much better reliability in embedded structure than in a planar structure. And it's actually pretty good as electrode because the surface is amazing. Uh, we can control the surface of the area, uh, which is, uh, for example, if you want to do, uh, I don't know what the slide is doing here, but we can control the surface energy of the polymers by electron uh, irradiation. This was published published recently, but let's skip the slide. Uh, Electrolysis, if you look at metal deposition, and this is for the students here, you can do PVD, 
it's a not very compatible. It's very difficult because it's a vacuum system. CVD is not compatible because of high temperature. Electroplating, uh, it's very difficult because the uh, substrate is uh, insulated. Now, electrolytes and ALD are two good solutions to deposit on polymers or deposit on insulators. Now, electrolytes plating basics, to, if you're not familiar with this, you have two simulation reactions, reduction of metal ions and oxidation of the reducing agent. So, let's say you want to reduce the metal, you take the metal ion the solution, you give it to electrons, and you have the metal being deposited. So how do you, how do you supply the metal in the same solution? You mix a reducing agent, and the reducing agent reacts and gives the electrons. So if the two reactions are running in parallel, one reaction donates the electrons, the other one gives the electrons, and then you have electrons splitting. The only trick is you need to start it. So you need to seal it. The reaction is autocatalytic, which means once it starts, it catalyzes itself. But you need to start it somehow. So if I start it here, it will deposit here. If I don't do any catalysis here, it will not deposit. So I can design it to be the solid deposited wherever I like. And the uh, selectivity is very, very high. Usually, we use palladium as catalysis. Now, in the good old days, and this is also one of the old IBM patents from many years ago, I think it was dated in the 50s or the 60s, what they do, they take the substrate with the insulator, they put, dip it with a solution with palladium, typically palladium chloride or some palladium complex. And what happens, you have nanodots of palladium on top of it, and this nanodot catalyzes the reaction, the catalyzes the two parallel reactions, the reaction of the positive in the metal and the oxidation of the reducing agent. This works fine. <coughs> this is the way people use to deposit on PC boards. And it's simple, it works for thick metal layers, it requires a roughening process. The problem is these nanodots, they're just lying on the surface. So what you usually do, you roughen the surface by either mechanical or some dipping in a strong etchant. And then instead of looking so, this is a flat area, the area kind of is rough, and then inside the trenches lie the palladium and the nanodots or dots, and then you get very good adhesion. But having said this, it depends on what polymers. It's very difficult to make it. I mean, there are some successes. There are some success stories people use it in some polymers, but in most polymers, you don't get a reliable coating because copper does not adhere to polymers. Or most of them. So what you do is the following. You take this polymer, and on top of it, put a self-assembled monolayer of a molecule which has two sides. One side which sits, adheres very well to the polymer, and you can design it. You can, if, for example, if it's a glass, if it's a, if it's a siloxin type of glass of a polymer, like PGMS, you put a, a siloxin molecule, like a toxic, silent type of molecule, SI molecule, and then you bind to it some carbon molecules, and on top of it you can put whatever you like. For example, you can put the uh, amine, NH2. NH2 adheres very well to palladium. So what you do, after it, you put set to set layer. For example, the most popular one is amino and And then you generate the monolayer. And then when you put the palladium occupation, this molecule binds very strongly to the molecule, and on the top of it, binds very strongly to this palladium because of this amino. You have an NH2, which attracts very strongly by the prostatic force the palladium. And then, you deposit the electrostatic. Now, this is how it looks, for example, if you have some, uh, this is mostly on glass, or silicon, or metal oxides. Uh, for example, you take up this toluene, up this, this, this molecule, Bind, have some uh, reaction with this molecule the OH, you get a strong SI force. Uh, bind this molecule, the NH2 attracts the palladium, you get very nice transportation. But then uh, we published a lot of work with this recently, we switched to this component, this one has three NH components. So we got 
much shorter. We found out that uh, switching to this molecule, we got uh, smaller nuclei of palladium. It's much denser concentrations. So we got much stronger binding forces. And friendly in the past, also got kind of switched to this compound. So many amines group that makes very strong binding to palladium. Just to show you, this is an oxide, and this is a nickel board. Nickel board is an alloy that is used a lot in artists, and we use it in the sanitation to prevent the sanitation of copper because it's a very good protection layer of copper. This is a green cell to set the molar process that I showed you is a result. The cell to set the molar layer enables electrolytic position practically on any surface that you like. You just need to design the binding molecule. You need the molecule to bind to whatever surface you have, you can need to be Google. So this is the trick to make the electrolytic the position of the surface of the bottom layer in the last trick. We tend to make the first force of that about the trend in the party work together for all these many years now. Since then we tried to a lot of polymers and then say most of the time it works. All the cells are the same. It's interesting all of these that we can modify the system. Now what do we do? What kind of electrons do we make? So now I switch from the technology to the application. We make electrons of various cells, peripheral hair signal feedback. I will talk a lot of also biology
generate the sense of feeling in the brain. This is going to take less than five. Unfortunately, this research purchased by a big company is not doing anything with it now.